I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another Ham Radio Answers video. In this video, we complete the erection of the MFJ1846 six band hex beam antenna and talk about the rotator used, the high gain AR500, an entry level antenna rotator that I'm using for turning the hex beam. You know, I've never had to worry about a rotator before. I haven't had a truly directional antenna, so I just put them up and let them do their work. But the MFJ1846 is different. It doesn't look like a traditional Yagi, but in fact it's pretty directional and therefore must be pointed. At first, I thought I would erect it sort of facing east, but it's too directional for that. Here's the antenna azimuth pattern for 20 meters. The beam width is a bit over 90 degrees, so it can cover an entire quadrant at a time. But look at this. If I want to get gain, I have to turn the beam just as I am conceptually doing in this diagram. The main antenna lobe is in black, and the beam width is in red. So if there's a station over here, I need to turn the antenna in that direction. Otherwise, reception and transmission in that direction is greatly attenuated. This diagram is an azimuthal map of the world centered on my location in Colorado. To get to Australia, I transmit generally west. To South America, generally southeast. To Africa, kind of northeast, as is Europe and the American East Coast. And to some Siberian radio station, I must go north over the North Pole. It is possible to build electronically steerable antennas if you have the money in space, but most hams use rotators to turn their antennas. When MFJ sent me the MFJ1846 hex beam, they also sent me the high gain AR500 rotator. The AR500 is the smallest rotator they have. Rotators can get humongous and expensive for the bigger beam antennas, but the AR500 clocks in at a reasonable 130 US dollars. Here's what you get. This large piece is the rotator itself. It's mounted atop the mast and just below the antenna. Another short mast goes from the rotator to the antenna itself. The rotator comes with an elementary controller and, interestingly enough, a remote control for the rotator. What the rotator does not come with is the cable between the rotator unit and the controller. I found some seven wire thermometer cable at Home Depot at 250 feet for a hundred US dollars. As it turns out, only three wires are needed so I doubled up on wires one and two and tripled up for wire three and then soldered these together. According to the high gain instruction sheet, this should be plenty. The cable fits into the rotator box via a lid on the bottom. The other end of the cable connects to the controller, which in my case is about a hundred feet away. The controller has a one amp 18 volt wall wart power supply and also a remote. Note that the batteries that came with my remote were dead because they had been on the shelf too long, so I disposed of them and put fresh Energizer batteries in. So here's a clip showing the entire MFJ1846 hex beam installation. It sits atop a 20 foot section of 1.5 inch Schedule 40 aluminum pipe. It's held in place by a lean-over mount, plus is guide in three places. Atop the 20-foot section, you can see the rotator. This close-up shows the antenna with the rotator. It's actually pretty big. Let's watch the rotator in action. First, showing the antenna at rest, and then the antenna rotating in a clockwise direction, and then a counterclockwise direction. The controller has numbers that show the number of degrees clockwise the antenna has rotated. Every so often you need to press calibrate, which rotates the antenna as far as it will go counterclockwise and then declares this to be zero degrees. 
As it turns out, zero degrees for me is somewhat south by southwest, so I will make a map that shows where the antenna is actually pointing based on the number on the readout. There's no provision to true up the readout with actual north. The rotator directions say that several memorized settings can be put into the remote so you can go to your favorite direction with the press of a number key. In the case of the antenna, the hex beam, which covers an entire quadrant, perhaps eight settings ought to suffice to cover everything. Often the humble rotator gets left out of discussions about antennas. It's an accessory that everyone simply assumes must exist, but one must remember to price it in when developing a budget for a real tower. Look at this one, for instance, for a large antenna atop a tall and sturdy tower, the T2XD, which consists both of the rotator and controller for a large medium antenna is almost $1,300. You can buy a pretty big antenna for that much money. And you still need to get the tower and all its accessories, not to mention the cable to the rotator. Now you see why lots of hams stick to simple wire antennas and verticals. Okay, let's look at the actual raising of the antenna captured by Amy Bergman. The fellow helping me is her husband, Mike. Mike also created the tilt-over stand for the antenna mast. We first put up the mast in such a way that two guy ropes were already in place. The mast was laid atop a stepladder and the rotator mounted. Following this, I walked the assembled MFJ1846 to the mast and tilted it up so it would slide over the short mast to the rotator. Mike attached the coax loose at the top so it could rotate with the antenna then attach the coax cable and the rotor cable to the mast all the way down. The next step was to walk the antenna up. The way we had set things up, two guy ropes were already in place and tight, leaving us to tighten up the third and then make sure the mast is vertical. Everything worked smoothly this time because I had engineered the erection process. The first time was by guess and by golly and I dropped the antenna and broke it. In fact, I'm surprised I didn't do more damage. But the fix turned out to be easy, and now the antenna is up in the air. Okay, I've given you an introduction to the need for a rotator in a system that has a directional antenna. The high gain AR500 is actually made by Channel Master, as seen on the bottom plate of the controller and stamped into the bottom lid of the rotator itself. Channel Master has long made accessories for televisions. Although much of the United States and Europe have gone to cable distribution for TV signals, there are still those who must mount fairly large TV antennas on their rooftops and put on a rotator so they can point the antenna at different cities. Highgain rebrands this rotator as the Highgain AR500. As far as I can see at this early stage, meaning the MFJ1846 antenna went up just yesterday, everything looks good. My next Ham Radio Answers video will look at operation of the MFJ1846 antenna and how well it works. I'll compare it to the station vertical and to the MFJ cobweb antenna. Stay tuned. In Channel News, every Friday I'm publishing one more Ask Dave video featuring our Ask Dave editor, Trevor Ullman, a summer intern who is a third year film student at BYU. If you ask a question via hamradioanswers at gmail.com, the email goes to Trevor. He sorts them by subject and we make videos answering the questions. You can also ask questions in the YouTube comments and I'll address those, or perhaps another viewer can answer. The channel has passed the 38,000 subscriber mark and continues to grow. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so. Then click the bell that appears on the page for any of my videos. This will give you a quick notification via email from YouTube that I just put up a video. Also, please like the videos and share them. 
If you would like to provide viewer support for this channel, go to decastlercom support. There's a link there to the tip jar, to Patreon, to the amateur extra videos on a thumb drive, and some cool Amazon links you can use. Your Amazon price won't go up, and I'll get a bit of a finder's fee from your patronage. I really appreciate your support. Your positive feedback and support keep me going. So until we next meet, 73.